Hello, I'm Nancy Castaldo, and I'm here today to share with you my latest book called The Farm That Feeds Us. I've written many books for young readers. This one is inspired by the numerous local uh, small farms uh, that are near me and many that I visited across the country. It's called The Farm That Feeds Us, A Year in the Life of an Organic Farm, and it's beautifully illustrated by Ginny Sue. Let's start by reading a little bit of it. Can you see the picture? Farming and feeding. Hooray for farms that supply us with the food we eat. Some farmers grow crops like corn, tomatoes, and wheat. Some farmers raise animals like pigs, chickens, and cows. Some do both. Farming has changed over the years. In the past, farmers used to run small farms with enough animals and crops to feed their family. Today, there are more large farms owned by corporations, which often farmed in just one type of crop or animal. But small family farms still exist and many are helping to keep our planet and the species that live here healthy and thriving for many years to come. Some farmers bring their foods to markets to sell and share with their communities. They sometimes grow and raise heritage and heirloom breeds, which look and taste like they have done for hundreds of years. These farmers help to keep our food varied and yummy. Farmers, whether they grow vegetables or provide us with the milk we drink or the meat we eat, keep us healthy and strong. Let's take a look at a farm that feeds us all year round. Here's that picture again of all the different people who can work on a farm. Types of farm. There are many kinds of farms, big and small. On all farms, the days are filled with busy work. Every season brings new life, new chores, and food for us to eat. Dairy farms. Dairy farms keep lots of animals like cows and goats that give us milk. These farms produce milk, cheese, and butter. You see that picture of those little cows. Poultry farms. Poultry farms raise chickens, turkeys, and other birds for food and eggs. Arable farms. On arable farms, the land is not used for grazing animals. Instead, the earth is plowed, either by tractor or by animal power. Once plowed, seeds are planted so that crops can grow. Sheep farms. Sheep farms raise sheep for food and also for wool and milk. Certain cheeses like pecorino and feta are made from sheep's milk. Orchards. Farms with rows and rows of trees that give us fruit and nuts are called orchards. They might grow apples, peaches, or almonds. Now let's skip over. So the next pages talk about spring on the farm. But we're into summer right now, so let's learn a little bit about how farms operate in the summer months. And here's a picture of some of the things that go on during summer. It's summer. Spring rains and winds have brought down the apple blossoms, but now the tree branches are cloaked with green leaves. Those leaves turn sunlight into food through photosynthesis. Some of that food will keep the tree growing, but some will be stored in the roots to help the trees survive the coming cold months. If you look closely, you can see tiny apples forming where the flowers once were. The farmer looks carefully at each branch, then plucks off some of the little apples so that the tree's energy can go into growing fewer, bigger apples. 
There he is, picking. Photosynthesis. Oh, can you see this picture of this pretty sunflower? And all the leaves and the dirt and the water. Plants take in a gas called carbon dioxide through their leaves while they soak up water from the soil through their roots. Using sunlight as their fuel, plants turn these ingredients into sugars, which they use as food. Photosynthesis also produces oxygen, which plants release into the air. Although plants don't need that oxygen, it is very useful for us as we need to breathe oxygen to survive. But what are some of the things that go on during the, the summer months? Have you visited a farm this summer? Or have you visited a farm during a previous summer? One of the things that I love to do is I love to go to my local farms and pick my own fruits and vegetables. Many farms offer that in the summer and in the fall. Pretty soon here, it's going to be apple season and it will be pick your own apple time. Let's read a little bit about pick your own. Rows and rows of green leaves hide juicy red strawberries underneath. It's time for visitors to come to the farm for pick your own season. No sprays to kill weeds or pests are used on the thin skinned fruit. So they are ready to be picked and pop into a waiting mouth. No washing needed. Rhubarb bunches are offered at the farm stand for visitors to make delicious rhubarb pies. So there's plenty of things to, to pick on this farm. The strawberries are one of the yummiest and juiciest fruits to eat at the beginning of the summer. So that's a few pages from the farm that feeds us. And it talks about farming all through the seasons and what goes on um, that uh, the farmers have to do, what chores have to be taken care of um, each, each time the season changes. Now let's look a little bit about what comes from a farm. I'm sure that if you look around your house and open your refrigerator, you'll find so many things that come from a farm here you'll see I have plenty of fruits and vegetables that come from my local farms and some that come from farms from far away. So I have avocado that comes from a, far, a farm that's farther away from where I live and some bananas that also come from a farm that's, that's not local. But I have lots of fruits and vegetables this summer that come from farms that are local like onions, and cucumbers and ooh, yummy fresh peaches. I have beets, I have garlic, I have an eggplant, and one of my very favorite things, corn. Do you like to eat corn? I do. Corn's one of my favorites and right now is the height of corn season where I live and maybe where you live too. Corn is very yummy. But I bet you haven't looked into your pantry and found that there are so many more things that come from farms. And that's a fun activity to do at home with your teacher, with your class, or, um, or virtually. So let's take a look at some of the things that are in my pantry that may not look like they come from a farm, but they definitely have their roots um, in a different farm. Well, first of all, this would have been bigger a couple days ago, but now it's pretty small. It's popcorn. Now, of course, popcorn comes from corn, just like it comes from the fresh farm, and it's made into popcorn. So here's a bag of popcorn that I've been munching on. So popcorn, of course, comes from a, a field of corn. But I also have a jar of peanut butter, and peanut butter comes from peanuts, and peanuts are also grown on farms. Let's see what else I have that I took here. Oh, how about some spaghetti? Spaghetti is made from wheat. It could also be made from other plants. It could be made from things like chickpeas or spinach. But this is made from, from a wheat called durum wheat, which is grown 
in fields on a farm. Uh, let's see what's next in my basket. Almond milk. Now almond milk, uh, almonds are nuts and they are found on trees. So what kind of a farm is that? We talked about a farm that is called an orchard. And an orchard are where peaches and apples and nuts are grown on trees. So these, this almond milk comes from a, a farm called an orchard and that grows almonds. I also have a box of cereal. Now cereal is packed with lots of grains. Now these come from oats. Of course, they're also grown on a farm. Now here are some other things that come from farms. They come from animals on farms. Butter comes from dairy, which comes from a cow on a farm, on a dairy farm. And some local cheese. These are all from my local farm. Oh, this is a cheddar cheese that's grown, that comes from cow milk from a local farm. And it's also meats, remember, come from farms. And I have some bacon that comes from a local farm. And bacon comes from pigs. And that is also from a local farm. Then I have something in my in my cupboard that comes from a farm far away that I bought in Arizona. I'm on the East Coast and this is blue corn pancake mix. So right in that name you know where that comes from. It comes from corn that is a different variety of corn from the corn that I have here. It's made with blue corn and this blue corn was grown in Arizona and it was grown on a farm there and made into a pancake mix. It also comes from, it also has included here some prickly pear cactus syrup. So that's a different fruit that I don't have here, um, but comes from far away and that's comes from a plant um, in Arizona as well. So that's a lot of food items, but you know what? We have a lot of things in our home that come from farms that are not food items. I'm a writer, so I have a lot of notebooks. Here's one of my notebooks. It has a cactus on the cover. And in my notebook, there are pages and pages of paper. Well, where does that paper come from? It comes from a different kind of farm. It comes from a tree farm. Paper's made from trees. So this was made from trees on a tree farm. And I also have clothing in my closet. Think about your closet. Think about what comes from a farm in your closet. It's hard to think that clothing comes from a farm, doesn't it? But it does. Here's a pair of my jeans. And you know what? My jeans are made with cotton fiber. And that cotton is grown on a farm somewhere. I'm not sure where it comes from maybe in the southern United States. Um, so my jeans, as well as my t-shirts, and a lot of other clothing articles come from farms. Sometimes you could find clothing that comes, that are, are made with other fibers other than cotton, natural fibers, like bamboo. So I want to see if you can do this scavenger hunt at your own, in your own classroom, or your own home and see how many things that are in your room or your home that have that are come from a farm. You might be surprised at how many items are in your house. Are there items that other items besides notebooks that come from a tree farm? Are there other things that come from a nut farm or an orchard? Do you have a lot of other produce? How about your closet? What else can come? Do you have leather in your closet? Are your shoes made of leather that comes from the hide of cows that are on a ranch, on a farm? There's all kinds of different things. Farms, not only 
feed us, but they they are they are one of the biggest parts of our lives. So I hope that you find a lot of inspiration and a lot of things that you didn't know before in the farm that feeds us. Inside you're also going to find you're going to find some different species that you may not find in the supermarket. Old heirloom species, things like old apples that may not be on your grocery store shelves, but they may be at a local farm stand. I'm going to leaf through and show you a couple of other things in here. And of course, it doesn't end with summer and fall. Even in the winter, when things seem like there's no life in a farm, there's a lot of things that go on in the farm to make sure that things grow again and grow well in the, in the spring and summer and fall. So there's a lot of things that we can do too. We can visit farmers markets and support our local farmers by shopping there and shopping at their farm stands and eating a variety of different vegetables so that we keep our diversity um, safe and secure and that helps all of us in the future. I want to thank you for visiting with me today and I hope that you enjoy this new book called The Farm That Feeds Us, A Year in the Life of an Organic Farm. Thanks. Bye for now.